Hey guys, are you ready to be bold? Are you ready to write amazing opinions and dissect opinions about this time period? Well, we're going to because we're going to be looking at some secondary sources and what those secondary sources are saying. And this is a time period just like the previous where we had big changes occurring in time period number six. Period seven is we're taking those changes and we're redefining ourselves into this new America and what that all means. And guess what? There's opinions about it. There's opinions on were they good, what started it, were they bad, who was affected by it. And so we're going to be looking at some people's opinions about those pieces and whether or not we think they're good or whether we thought they were bad. Because we had some major events that caused us to really think back and redefine what we, what we feel it is to be an American. And so we're going to look at some historians' writings about their opinions on these changes and as we redefine ourselves as a new America. All right, so here's our layout, and hopefully at this point it's getting pretty familiar to you, right? You can see how like there's a structure and you're able to use that structure to your advantage. And so we have two historians' opinions. And so we want to know, first of all, is it the same or is it different? Most likely different. And what is their, what are they talking about? What's their, what are they forming an opinion about? And so in this case, we can see from question A, it says briefly describe one major difference between Badger's and Brinkley's historical interpretation of da, 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 the New Deal. That's our topic. And so we can assume they're different. So we can assume maybe one saying it's positive, it's negative. Maybe one has a cause, maybe one has the effect. We're going to look at some of those elements of what they're saying. And then B and C wants us to take their argument and be good Abe writers and find an example that would back up their argument. So take a moment, go ahead and pause, read through these two sources, see if you can find the difference, maybe think about how you would write this, and then let's delve in and look at how someone did write it so you can use that as a guide in your own writing. All right, remember question A wants to know what's the argument? And because it's an argument, we have to give not only the difference, but we have to say why they feel like that difference is valid. And so we're going to use that magical word, because. So question A says, Badger's and Brinkley's differences on the interpretation of the New Deal focuses on whether or not the New Deal was effective. So that's what we're looking at. Was it, was it not? Badger argues that the New Deal was effective because, here's the argument, it created new jobs and allowed the government to work efficiently during a difficult time. Brinkley argues the New Deal was not effective, remember they're different, because it didn't ever bring back jobs back to the original levels before the Great Depression. So they have this opinion about the effectiveness of it. One is saying, yes, Badger saying, it's amazing, it worked, it did exactly what it needed to do. And Brinkley is saying, no, even though we made these, this huge dramatic effort, it never did what it was designed to do. So now you as a historian have to look at this and think, okay, what can I use to back up this argument? because we always give examples to help back up our historical argument. So let's look at Badger first. Remember, Badger is saying it was effective because it created new jobs and allowed the government to work effectively. So can we think of any examples to back it up? Well, this person wrote one example from the period 1900 to 1945 that supports Badger's argument that the New Deal was effective in creating jobs was, here's our example, the formation of the CCC. The CCC employed young men to work in jobs that helped, such as building up areas of national parks. This allowed not only the men to be employed, but as they spent their money or sent their money home, it allowed the consumer economy to rebuild itself. Do you feel like that's a good argument? Let's see if we can make some more. Remember, Brinkley was saying, uh-uh, not effective. So one example from the period 1900 to 1945 that supports Brinkley's interpretation that the New Deal didn't help was World War II. The mass mobilization that occurred during World War II brought the levels of unemployment down and allowed Americans to save money again. This occurred almost 10 years after the New Deal, which illustrates the inefficiency of the New Deal. 
So we're using these examples to back up arguments on whether or not the New Deal was effective. All right, you're going to use these amazing historical argument skills that you're working on as you look at another topic from this time period, because remember, this is a time period of redefining ourselves, And so you're going to look at how two historians feel about a topic in this time period of redefining who we are.